This review is made possible by Toyota of Naperville. Toyota of Naperville is the largest Toyota dealer in Illinois, with hundreds of new and used vehicles in their inventory. Visit www.toyotaofnaperville.com or in person at 1488 West Ogden Avenue in Naperville, Illinois. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2020 Toyota Avalon TRD. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6. Down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. This video is sponsored by carmarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. Carmarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the US. But before we get back to that 3.5 liter V6, let's talk about what TRD means. So this is a trim level of the Toyota Avalon and TRD stands for Toyota Racing Development. And so back in the day, they used to do Toyota's racing development. Now it's more really just a trim package. I get bigger wheels with that. I get bigger brakes with the TRD package. I get a rear spoiler, different front lip and bumper. In here, I get a TRD shift knob. TRD is embossed in the headrests. I have red seat belts, red stitching, things like that. It's really more of an appearance package. I do also have a TRD exhaust, which makes it sound a little bit more toned. It's not louder per se, but it definitely is more toned. You definitely hear it a little bit more than you would in a regular Avalon. I think personally, this is a great, great package. It makes the car look so much sleeker and sportier, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6. Well, Toyota uses this in pretty much everything these days. You can find this engine in the Camry, Tacoma, Lexus products, you know, the IS300 has this engine. Toyota Sienna has this engine. It's a very well-rounded engine. You're not gonna have any issues with it. The R&D has been done. And it's a good engine. It produces about 305-ish horsepower, at least here in the Avalon. So I'll put horsepower and torque up on the screen. And then I will switch to fuel economy. That is the fuel economy, which isn't bad. It is a larger vehicle. You have to take that into consideration. And of course, those numbers were found on toyota.com. Great induction noises, and it's not slow. You put it into sport mode, it will do the business. Now, it isn't quite up to the level of a sort of, you know, sport sedan that you might find in the Audi S line or the BMW, you know, M series. It's nothing like that. So don't even get that into your head. But it is definitely an adequate amount of power for the price range and for what you get. It shifts, you know, it's smooth, it's nice. It is decently sporty. So when you do put it into sport mode, it will shift like a sport transmission. And I like that a lot. No other comments on it besides that. And last but not least, this is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. On the left is my tachometer with coolant in it. And on the right is my speedometer with fuel in it. And that Z13 sticker you see, that's just for shipping purposes. So don't mind that. When you buy yours, it's not gonna have that. But in the middle, I get tons and tons of different things. It is a screen, so I have my lane keep assist and radar cruise control settings up at the top. Right now, I'm looking at my miles per hour in digits and distance till empty, but I can scroll through here to driving support, my audio options, my system status, so what is turned on, pre-collision warning, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert are all activated. Then I could turn things off and on. These are my settings and then my warnings and messages. I can also scroll over on a couple of these pages. So let's go back up to the top here. While I do have my speed and digits, I could switch it to my trip fuel economy or just my eco rating, so how well my driving is doing. Driving support doesn't have any pages, audio doesn't have any pages, and system status only has two pages where I could also look at my tire PSI for all four wheels, which is very, very handy. On the steering wheel, we do have a lot going on, but it's not too much to handle. On the left, I have my selector dial for that center screen, back phone options, and volume at the bottom. And then on the right, I have my cruise control options, my safety settings, and my skip track as well for the radio. 
I like the steering wheel overall. It is perforated leather wrapped, has the red stitching. I think that's a very nice touch. To the left of me, I do have a vent, and then I have a couple of interesting buttons. I do have my auto high beams, traction control off, my trunk release, and my fuel cap. On the door, I just have my window switches, lock and unlock, and power mirrors. And then we get to the center. I do have a pretty large radio. I like it a lot. I think the infotainment screen is really nice, and Toyota now has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so I'm pleasantly enjoying Apple CarPlay at the moment. But we can go back to the standard Toyota infotainment system. It's not bad. I just really think that Apple CarPlay kind of trumps all at this point. This particular Avalon does have the JBL speaker upgrade, so the sound system is very, very nice. It's very, very nice, and the nice thing about it is that it has really good bass. If you're into bass, and it doesn't have to be cranked loud. Just that mid volume, the bass is still very full. And I really like that out of a sound system. But getting below the infotainment center, we do have our climate controls, very sleek, pretty modern here, very angular. I like it a lot. We do have three levels of heated seats for both front occupants, fan controls, heated mirrors, anything you really want is right there. Coming down to the center console, of course, we do have the shifter cup holders and some buttons below the shifter. So the cup holders, it's kind of odd because there's one that's a different size than the other. They're asymmetrical, kind of different. A couple other Toyotas have this, but that's fine. The shifter itself feels great. Actually getting it into drive, it actually has this really satisfying clunk. It's not a manual, so I get, it's not really like bushings, but like it sort of has that sort of click feel, that really satisfying clunk into gear. I absolutely love that. And of course it does say TRD on the top, leather wrapped. I can move the shifter over and plus minus if I'd like as well, as well as I do have paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. So I could paddle shift as well. Below the shifter, I do have Eco Normal Sport modes. So of course Eco, you're gonna get better gas mileage. Normal is normal and Sport is a sportier it's gonna hold on to gears a little bit longer. It doesn't unlock any secret turbo or anything like that, but it's nice to have. I do have my auto holding brakes, really nice feature for stop and go traffic. And then I have my power parking brake, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's an automatic, so I don't really care. Now the seats are nice and comfortable. Like I mentioned earlier, they are leather. They have the red stitching, the TRD and the headrest. They are power and heated, but surprisingly, I don't get memory seats. That's annoying to me because I'll talk about it more later on, but this car's MSRP is $42,000. That's a hefty chunk of change to not get memory seats. So I really wish that it did have memory seats if I could ask anything of Toyota. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2020 Toyota Avalon TRD and JBL speakers in the doors right off the bat. But really, this is where you're gonna really notice a difference between like the Camry and the Avalon. This is a slightly longer chassis. And so I have plenty of leg room. Headroom is good. It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. I'm 5'11 and I got maybe half an inch to spare. It's a little bit of that sloping roof line doesn't help the situation, but I mean, you know, it's fine. My head isn't hitting the ceiling. The red seat belts do carry on back here. I like that accent a lot. And then we do have a center console, uh, a little sort of phone holder, I guess, and then two cup holders. I do also have two 2.1 amp USB chargers down below. So those do not go to the radio. They're just chargers. But it's really nice. So people in the back seat don't, you know, have to shove their phone up there to charge it, whatever. They can do it on their own back here. Really, really nice back seat. I think this is sort of one of the main draws of the Avalon is this longer, more VIP, more luxury chassis. You know, the longer it is, the more room you have. Uh, and so I really, really like that. Now we have to talk about the looks. I think the TRD looks absolutely great. I requested one in this red color. I think this red really stands out. I love the black accents, the black wheels, the red TRD logos. I think overall together, it works really, really well. I think this is, for its price point, one of the best looking sedans you can get. And so let's talk about the TRD package. Well, the Avalon starts base price is around $35,000 for the base model. And you could actually spec them all the way up to 43,000. This isn't actually even the most expensive version you can get. The TRD actually is in the top. You can get the hybrid limited. So it'll have the hybrid drive system and a couple more bells and whistles. And so is the TRD worth $7,000 more than the base model Avalon. Well, it's gonna come down to your personal preference. Do you find these features worth it? 
Personally, I do because I think it looks so much better. And for me, the look of a car has become more and more important because if I'm going to spend a good chunk of change on a car, I don't want it to be ugly. I don't want to come outside and go like, ugh. I want to love the car. If I'm going to spend any money on a car, I'm going to want to love it. If you have $42,000 just sitting around to throw at the wall, then buy whatever you want. But if $42,000 is a significant a chunk of change to you, then you want to get something that's going to sort of withhold to your standards. And this absolutely does. Really the only complaint I can find with this car is the lack of memory seats. For the price point, it should definitely 100% have memory seats but besides that the powertrain is again adequate it's nothing compared to like an audi s6 or like a bmw m4 but it's not priced like one it's priced like a base model 4 series and so if you can deal with the lack of a luxury or upscaled badge toyota doesn't really hold luxury weight when you think of toyota you think of the corolla you think of the camry you definitely think of reliability, but you don't usually think of luxury. This is sort of that diamond in the rough. This is a nice luxury car with a Toyota badge. It's not quite a Lexus. And so if you could deal with that, and if you could deal with no memory seats, I think that this is a great purchase. I really can't find anything else that I really dislike about this. It now has Apple CarPlay. That was my complaint about the older Avalons. They did not have Apple CarPlay. Toyota really tried to push their own thing and it just didn't work. And so they finally implemented CarPlay and I, I just think that's amazing. But I will show the actual sticker for this very car, sticker price. Again, it's always going to depend on your local Toyota dealer, but from Toyota of Naperville, that is how much this car costs. And for me personally, I believe this car is worth that money. But speaking of Toyota Naperville, I want to give a huge shout out to them for letting me take out their 2020 Avalon TRD. I was very excited to do more TRD vehicles. They also have a TRD Camry, so expect that on the channel at some point in the future. I'm glad that Toyota's doing this. This is actually the first year of the Toyota Avalon TRD. And so I'm glad that, you know, the TRD name is starting to trickle down into more and more vehicles. And we're going to get fun, more sporty trim levels. I still think that Toyota needs another sports car of their own, maybe an MR2 reboot. But while we wait for that, I'll settle for these TRD trims. But getting back to it, thank you so much, Toyota of Naperville. They have a couple of TRDs on the lot. They have tons of Avalons on the lot, and they have hundreds of other cars on the lot. I mean, any new Toyota that you want, they have a new Supra in their showroom, and they have over 100 used cars on the lot at all times. Uh, I've done Porsches from them, BMWs, and even other things like Volkswagens, Cadillacs, you know, they get everything in. So if you're searching for a new car, please go check out Toyota of Naperville. I think you'll find what you are looking for. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, 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 I,